Hey, FCF, good morning. <clears throat> we're continuing our journey through 2 Peter, and we're in 2 Peter chapter 2. We're now going to look at verses 6 through 8. I kind of touched on them a little bit uh, recently, but I'll go into them a little more thoroughly. Now, mind you, the background is Peter's warning about false teachers that have entered into the church. They were starting a teaching um, that's systemically called you know, Gnosticism. It, it, it has a lot of complex pieces for its belief system, but essentially it revolved around this idea that matter was evil and that to reach God we needed these uh, illuminated experiences. We, we'd go through these different angelic layers. We'd uh, engage in meditative experiences, ha have these engagements with angelic beings. They'd illuminate us and we'd learn more about the peace of God that exists in us and that we are really ourselves God and that's the way of salvation by discovering uh, our own Godhood as we go through these layers of angels and these illuminated experiences totally false uh, it depicted jesus is not really human but just as um, this kind of a holographic image sort of thing it um, it didn't didn't emphasize that it was his sacrificial love on the cross that was the key to, to bringing back human trust after satan had slandered uh, the lord in, in the garden so it, it was a total reversal, and yet it still used the terminology of salvation. It used, you know, used Jesus' name, but they just depicted it very differently. And, of course, they had um, a very different moral system, as I said before. Some of them were ascetics. Since matter is evil, the body is matter, that you punished your body to subdue it and allow your spirit to rule. Others thought since your body is evil anyway, it doesn't matter what you do with it. You know, So just sin in any way you choose because it really doesn't matter. It's what you think and what you believe that counts. So it was very appealing in certain ways. So we'll pick up. God's just emphasizing, emphasizing in these verses that, that this is not going to be allowed to, to go unjudged. So I'm going to pick up in verse 6. If he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the filthy lives of the lawless men, for that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by their lawless deeds he saw and heard. So we'll, we'll just stop there. So once again, he's given this example of Sodom and Gomorrah. So he's given this example, the angels that sinned when they mated with women in Genesis 6, the flood generation, it was connected to the angels that sinned in the hybrid race, the Nephilim, and all the evil and violence that they brought on earth. If you read Genesis 6, you'll find that. Now he's linking it to one other place that was, that was so uh, deep in its evil and so dangerous in its evil that he judged it quickly too, and that was Sodom and Gomorrah. You can read about it in Genesis chapter 19. Um, these cities that were rampant with immorality, so much so that, that God saw them as a danger to the rest of the planet, the, the way it might have spread. And so he, he stun, stuns it a little bit, he stunts it to try to slow down uh, the, the growth of the type of evil that was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. So the, these passages are there just simply to remind the believers that are going through this tumultuous time where false teaching is going on and people are following and churches were probably splitting and believers were having arguments to say this is this is not going to go unjudged god's maybe not dealing with it immediately in obvious ways but he's going to deal with it now like i say the the this all, was all taking place in the the end toward the end of the first century the second century and the third century the christians continued to battle this and finally um, pretty much gathered up all the false teachings, all the false writings of the Gnostics and destroyed them. Now, we still have some today. The, in 1945, they found a bunch of them in, um, the, the, they're called the Nag Hammadi writings, and um, they're full of fanciful tales uh, about Jesus that sound nothing like the Bible. But um, essentially, the early Christian church in the second and third centuries were able to, to bridle this false teaching and, and all but put it out of existence. Now, having said that, it exists today big time in lots of different places, in lots of different forms. It's, it, it has versions that have you know, survived, but that's a whole different discussion for a different time. So we'll, we'll close here today and we'll pick up again tomorrow. Thank you.